So far, amateurs have owned the PCA main event. Tudo do Brasil, pai. Vamos. Oh. All in. Dominating our screens with their bold play. You guys give the maniac all the chips. And big personalities. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> but as the stakes rise, the pros are in their element and looking to take back control. Welcome to the Bahamas. The sun is out on Paradise Island, and inside the Atlantis Resort and Casino, the players are arriving. 43 remain here on day four of the PokerStars Caribbean Adventure main event. Hello, everyone. I am James Hartigan. Alongside me, Maria Ho and Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. What do you expect to see today, Joe? I am excited about the fact that we still have so many qualifiers in the field. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about the PCA is that we qualify more players for this event than we do for pretty much any other event throughout the course of the year. Uh, the PCA is a place where we look back at the stars of yesteryear, but we also create the stars of tomorrow year. Maria, obviously we have got some established stars in, but today, I'm not gonna call it the graveyard of champions, but traditionally we see a lot of the familiar faces fall by the wayside. Yeah, but we still have a chance to get a really exciting final table. There's so many big names, but they might clash because they're not afraid to play poker against each other. Yeah, should make for a great day. Should make for some exciting action. Well, let's recap what happened last time at the PCA. Big names clashed with big personalities. Online qualifier Gledeby Brito joined the feature table as chip leader. But after a run-in with David Peters, he lost more than half his stack. Meanwhile, at the secondary table, amateur player Oleg Titov couldn't get the better of former EPT champ Adrian Mateos. Good whip. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't smooth sailing for all the pros. Victor Ramden, Vladimir Trojanovsky, and Barry Greenstein all hit the rail. Out in the field, Maria Konnikova also had a tough day, while Maria Lampropoulou continued to thrive. And after a sickening cooler late in the day, Sweden's Carl Stark took the chip lead as we head into day four. Well, let's look at the lineup we have on our two feature tables, starting with the players who are going to be taking their seats on the main stage. We mentioned that Gledeby Brito had a rough session yesterday. Well, he still has over 400K. He leads this table, but Maria, Liv Bury is hot on his heels. Yeah, Liv has improved her game a lot over the years. I really feel like she's been working hard to keep up with the game, and I think she's showing that here. Well, over at the secondary feature table, which will be breaking quite soon, We've got a pretty strong lineup, Joe. Yeah, we have Adrian Mateos and Maria Lampropoulou, who put on a clinic during the bubble, and maybe one of the best players in the world, D. Peters. Yeah, with David Peters, Maria, it's not so much about the personality, it's more about the way he plays poker, and he does that incredibly well. Yeah, and it's also how calm and collected he is. I've never seen him get rattled, never seen him go on tilt. He's been able to escape that uh, every time I've watched him play. And there is the other player you wanted to highlight, Corey Aldemir. Yeah, Corey is a regular on the high roller scene, of course, one of the Germans, one to be feared, but he actually told me Adrian gave him some trouble when they played together, so I think we might see them do battle again. For sure. Well, looks like we're ready to get the action started on day four of the PCA main event. It's time to shuffle up and deal. And now thanks to Maria Ho as we play down to the final two tables. Blinds, a 4,000, 8,000 with a 1,000 ante. And at the feature table, action will be on Livbury. Oh, that's a nice hand, Pocket Kings. This is a hand you should raise. Yeah. 
and raise she does to 17,000. Jason Stemmler from Canada as ace 10. He folds. Probably the right fold against an under the gun raise. Round to Aaron Olshin with five deuce off. He passes. Ivan Zechev is on the button. Jack deuce. Nah. Andre Lubavetsky with ace nine in the small blind. Same thing here as ace 10, only not as good of an ace, not as good of a position. And Gladby Brito with 10 5 in the big blind. I think that will be a fold. Come on, folks. Give <laughs> me some action. Right, ace 10, bud. Hmm? Ace 10? Good folds. 10 5. Huh? 10 5. 10 5. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> no. Great hand. Get it in. My home game, we literally call 10 5 the hand that never wins. All out into the field for the first elimination of the day. We've already lost a player. Say goodbye to Lachisar Petkov out in 43rd place, cashing for $22,020. Goodbye, Lachisar Petkov. He was eliminated by Carl Stark, who has consolidated his chip lead. Stark now playing a stack of 1.29 million. We're heading over to the secondary feature table where Adrian Mateos has defended his big blind. He's called a raise from Corey Aldemir, and these two will go heads up to the flop. Queen five ain't such a good hand either, but it's suited. Well, that's a pair for Mateos, but huge draws for Aldemir. Yeah, lots of outs, including his tens and nines. He continues for 24,000. Can't fold a pair. It's hard to make a pair. Mateos calls with his fives. The turn card is the queen of clubs. That's the flush for Aldemir. A horrible card for Mateos because he's improved to two pair. Aldemir fires again, 65,000. Mateos is no dodo though. He's gonna know even though he has improved. His hand is far from the nuts. He calls again, and this hand is going to the river. Mateos looking for a queen or a five. It's a deuce. He checks. Probably looking to check call. He's got slightly better than a bluff catcher. There are some value hands that would bet here that he's beating. Well, that's 150k from Aldemir into a pot of 225k. Big decision for Mateos. And he decides to call. Flash. That, did he just announce his hand, or is he describing what Adrian just did to his own chips flushed? A sizable chunk of Mateos' stack slides across the table to Corey Aldemir, who now has 983k. He is now third in chips overall. Well, that's a nice place to be. Let's check on some of the non-pros in the field, including Jonathan West. Currently has a stack of 765k. Online qualifier Daniel Kupel is a below average stack with 285k. He sat next to Oleg Titov. <laughs> the two battled it out at the secondary table for most of yesterday. Sharman Olshin, AKA Aaron's mom, is quite low in chips. Hi, Mrs. Olshin. And author Maria Konnikova is at risk here. It's a three-way all-in, and Maria is way behind. At least the, at least the jacks are low. Yeah, <laughs> Aces aren't always a huge favorite three ways, but they're looking pretty dang good here. Woof. That's not promising. Maria needs running jacks or queens to survive. It's all over on the turn. Malayev will more than double up, and Maria Konnikova is KO'd. Maria KO Nikova. Well, that's exciting. Good spot, though. Good. <laughs> Maria out in 42nd place, cashing for 22k. <laughs> Great result for her after her win in the national event at the start of the PCA. 
and all good material for her forthcoming book. Maria Konnikova has had a fantastic run at the Pokestars Caribbean Adventure 2018, scoring two big results, including a win. She now leaves the Bahamas in high spirits, and we're sure we'll be reading about it soon. Well, books evolve and change over time, but obviously this is going to be a huge highlight. I cashed for over 100000 so it's been a great trip, and it was pretty amazing making a deep run in the main. I'm really excited, and this will definitely be a big chapter of the book. But Maria's story is not over yet. She's bagged herself a platinum pass, which means we'll be seeing her again in 2019. I'm really excited that I get to come back for the Players' Championship. I think that uh, it'll probably be the, the highest buy-in I've ever played, um, and I'm really excited to come back for that. And you could win free entry to this event by playing live or online. Find out how to qualify at PokerStars. 41 players remain here on day four, and we've got three-way action at the secondary feature table. Corey Aldemir opened with King Jack. Helio Cream called with sevens. And Callum Dees is in from the big blind with ace four. Well, Aldemir flops trips. Or as I like to call it, three of a kind. He was the pre-flop aggressor. I like a bet here, like a kid in a horror movie. No one's going to believe you. Yeah, he continues for 19,000. The older guy's definitely not supposed to believe you. He's a believer. Ooh. Cream folds sevens. Dees has paired his four. Why can't for once Dees just make the nuts? He calls, heads up to the turn, which is the three of clubs. So Callum Dees is now drawing dead. Ah, oh, I thought he picked up a flush draw, but nope, still a five card board, huh? Checks a second time. Aldemir bets 50k. Oh boy. Try not to look so excited, Corey. Dees calls, this hand going to the river. 200,000 in the middle. Dees has 171k behind. And Dees pairs his ace. This could get him into trouble. He checks to Aldemir. That is 300k, enough to put Dees all in. And this has gone bet, bet, bet by Aldemir. It's either a triple barrel bluff or exactly what it looks like. Can Dees get away from two pair? Yes, he can. Good fold, sir. Meanwhile, Corey Aldemir adds 113k to his stack. He has now crossed the 1 million mark. Aldemir has more than $7 million in live caches to his name. He's been crushing recently. He is one of the most feared Germans in the game. And it was playing against a familiar face, which kick-started his ascendancy as a high roller. A couple years ago, I got heads up in a bracelet event in Vegas against Adrian, actually. He beat me heads up. I lost a flip against him, raised a flip. But that was still, like, my first really good result. That was first big, big summer, yeah, and after that I, I kept playing the high rollers. I'm um, looking forward to next year's big 25k by actually. Is there anyone left in Germany not playing high stakes poker? Asking for my friend Friedrich. Sorry Friedrich, but it's not good news. <laughs> All in at the outer tables, which sees the elimination of Michael Cameron in 41st place. The former chip leader. KO'd by Lucas Blanco, who now has an above average stack. Meanwhile, we are breaking a table. We are breaking the secondary feature table. New seat assignments for the likes of Adrian Mateos and David Peters. I am so, so sorry for whatever two tables those guys go to. And Corey Aldemir is moving to the main feature table up on the stage. Hey. Boromir, meet Arwen. One does not simply run over the feature table. Blind still 4-8. 
Action has been folded to Aaron Olshan. He has ace jack, and he's a reasonably short stack. What would your mom do? Oh. He shoves. I'll allow it. Ivan Zachev folds. Aldmir is out. Lubavetsky passes. Brito gives up the button. How much? Liv Bri asks for a count. Say 132. She's got ace eight in the small blind. Too much a Liv stack. Jason Stemler in the big blind. As ace king. I call. The reluctant call, but he is ahead. Yes, sir. Aaron Olshan at risk and dominated. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. A 7 6 4 flop. Olshan drawing to three outs. The turn card is a three. Sweat. We do now have some chop outs. Aaron Olshan dead to a jack or a five on the river. It's an ace. Yes, Good luck, everybody. Good yeah. Aaron Olshan eliminated from the PCA main event in 39th place, cashing for $25,400. You know who you got outlasted by? Your mom. His chips now belong to Jason Stemler. She's going to have a long talk with Jason Stemler's mom. Well, as Aaron Olshan exits the arena, we have got heads up action at one of the outer tables. Maria Lampropoulou has bet the turn. Action now on Jonathan West. Cool. Cool. And this hand's going to the river. Not sure what either player's got, but we do know Maria Lampropoulou is aggressive AF. 145,000 in the middle. River card is the queen of spades. Well, some straights got there and some straight draws just paired their queen. And Popolu checks. West is betting. That is 65,000. And Propolu. A dicey river if you had top or middle pair. She faults. Jonathan West takes it down. Button's good, and yeah. And he now has more than a milli. West stack going north. Well, staying out in the field, Adrian Mateos has gone to the flop against Christian Rudolph. Seriously, why does this dude look so familiar? The Germans betting. 20,000. Teos calls. Adrian looks like he's about to do some translating at the UN. The board gets straight here with a seven on the turn. Rudolf slows down, checks the action to Mateos. 63K into 81K. Well, you know what they say. It's always coming seven. All in. A check raise shove from Rudolph. I don't think Mateus likes his hand that much. <laughs> wow, I've never seen him do this before. Clearly, the seven was a good card for Rudolph. Guy loves a seven. Mateus faults. And boy, is he looking sad. Christian Rudolph now playing 845,000. Adrian Mateus down to 257,000. I regret, but I should check next time I learn. <laughs> <laughs> Man down. We've just lost Callum Dees in 38th place. 
The qualifier cashes out for $25,400. And we're heading back to the main stage where Corey Aldemir is in the big blind and facing a raise from Brazilian qualifier, Glad to be Briso. Glad to be here, everybody. Glad to be here. We know Aldemir is dominated, but that is a tough fold to make in the big blind. He calls the raise. These two go to the flop. King 6-5. Couple of backdoor draws for Aldemir, but Brito is still ahead with ace-queen high. Action goes check-check. Aldemir pairs his seven and takes the lead. Check. And once again, the action goes check-check. Oh, the river is a queen, and Brito now has a lock on this hand. Aldemir bets 26,000. Burrito calls. And the Brazilian will win this pot. That's right, chuck him over, make it look like it doesn't hurt. Vamos! Uh, glad to be her name is Samara. He's very excited for a man who still has less than half the tournament average. Meanwhile, Sharman Olshan is all in and behind. Ace-king against queen. She needs to hit on the turn or river to survive. Sharman is being railed by her husband, David. Wouldn't you know, it's the mother of all flips. Lucas Blanco, her opponent in this hand. The turn card is a seven. Six outs for Sharman Olshan. She doesn't hit. She's eliminated in 33rd place. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. $25,400. So both Olshans are out. Thanks, Lucas Blanco. What a fun story, though, huh? Mother and son. Makes me want to call my mom. Hey, Ma. Just want to let you know I miss you. Here at the PokerStars Caribbean Adventure 2018, we are down to just 32 players. Among those KO during the first level of day four, a mother and son, Sharman and Aaron Olshan. They may be out, but they're delighted to have shared this experience. The PCA main event is one of the best poker tournaments in the world. I just feel very blessed that I was able to have this kind of special experience here because I've been coming and I will continue to come, so it's fantastic. This has definitely been one of the more fun, probably the most fun poker tournament we've ever played just because we both went so deep in such a big event, you know. You know, we just love doing this together and the fact that makes this very, very special is that it is my son's first time at the PCA and I'm just so proud that we were able to get this far together. It's just a very proud moment for me. Well, I know who's giving Lucille and Buster a run for their mother boy money this year. So we're down to just four tables in the PCA main event. Action at the feature table is on Jason Stemmler. He faults, as does Florian Maurer. Ivan Zachev. As ace, jack of diamonds. Well, this guy is nowhere to be found on my all-time favorite Bulgarian player list. He races to 17,000 from the hijack. Action is now on Glad to be Brito in the small blind. Queen nine. Glad to be here, everybody. Glad to be here. That goes in the muck. Lithbury has ace five in the big. Once again, it's pretty tough to ditch an ace out of the big blind without knowing you're playing against the tightest of players. Does he look tight? That's a call. Deal us a flop. Well, it's top pair for Zetchev, but it's two pair for Lipari. This is a pretty brutal cooler for General Zod. Ivan continues for 15,000. Liv. Check raises to 45,000. Makes sense with some straight and flush draws out there. 
A call from Ivan. The turn card is a king. Lives an 86% favorite. And she shoves. I have not seen a spot this bad since the tip of my nose, literally every time I have to leave the house. It's all into Cole. And I think he might have to call. There are so many draws Liv could have. He does call. He will see that he's behind, and Ivan Zetchev will need a king or a jack on the river, or he will be our 32nd place finisher. The river card is a four. Zetchev's eliminated. Zetchev, Zilchev. A nice part for Liv Barry. And Ivan Zetchev doesn't leave with Zilch. He cashes for $25,400. Lipperi now playing an above average stack. Well, over to table, Peters. David of that ilk is going to the turn in a hand against Jean Atiba. And that turn card is the ace of clubs. This is now a very flushy board. And whether he's got it or he doesn't, D. Peters isn't going to be checking a lot of four flush boards. He bet the flop, and he bets again on the turn, 85,000. Atiba calls. The river card is the nine of hearts, pairing the board. Ooh. Here comes a third barrel from Peters, 130,000. Atiba quickly calls. Peters tables king eight of clubs for the nut flush. I love being right. Either he had it or he didn't. Well, that pot will see David Peters take the chip lead. He's now playing a stack of 1.47 million, 183 big blinds. We have four players in the field with seven-figure stacks, the other three being Jonathan West, Oleg Titov, and Carl Stark. Christian Rudolph almost has a million, 999,000. Corey Aldemir is still a top 10 stack. Blinds are up to 5,000, 10,000. And at the main feature table, Carl Stark has just taken a seat. Action folded to Florian Maurer, who's got queens. Queens for witness protection over here. He raises under the gun plus one to 22K. Stark folds queen 10. Aldemir's out. Round to Brito in the small blind. He's got ace nine of hearts. He calls. Liv Barry has king seven of spades in the big blind. She calls as well. We've got three-way action. Not a huge fan of the Brito call out of position against an early razor. The flop is 9-6-3. That's top pair for Brito. Okay. But Maura is still best with his over pair. Liv should be checking as well. Let's see if Maurer continues. Pretty good flop here for two queens. Thirty-three thousand into seventy-three thousand, and Brito's got no shot at folding top top. Oh, he calls. Live folds. Heads up to the turn. Maurer currently a three-to-one favorite over Brito. It's the six of diamonds pairing the board. I'm only. What? Okay. Brito shoves? How much, Chris? This would be a very weird way to play a flop set or a bigger over pair or even a six. So I think queens are going to have to find a call here. Hmm. There's the call. And Brito will be busto unless he can hit an ace or a nine on the river. I mean, his wife did win a million dollar spin and go, so he does run pretty good. Five outs. The river is a queen. That's a full house for Maura. The Brazilian qualifier is out. Things have not been going well for the amateurs today. 
Still a pretty good run for this guy. Glad to have been here, everybody. Glad to have been here. He cashes for just shy of 29K. And Florian Maurer now has an around average stack as Gledeby's PCA dream comes to an end. Well, we're going to get a new player at the feature table. Adrian Mateos is taking a seat. Buenos dias, Adrian. Good level? No. <laughs> I have five really sick spots, so no good luck. It could have been worse. You could have been eliminated, like Brazilian qualifier Gladby Brito. Dei o meu melhor, fui chipilide ainda, apareci para TV e é uma experiência muito bacana. Me diverti com meus amigos, revi amigos brasileiros e tentei jogar o jogo, mas hoje infelizmente não deu tudo certo como vinha andando antes. Acabou que eu caí em 31, mas eu tô feliz. Já tá passando, tô voltando normal e sendo, tá, tá, tá sendo bem bacana. Hopefully, Gledeby will be back in the Bahamas next year. Well, we're going to play the next hand from Corey Aldemir's perspective. Mateus has limped in the small blind. Aldemir is in the big blind and has 6 3. I think we should check. That's what Aldemir does. Oh, I'm so good. Free flop. And what a flop, 10-6-6 trips for Aldemir. Is this real life? I get to decide what to do with this hand? I think we're gonna win. Mateos is betting 40,000. I'm all in. No, 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 wait, 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 hold on. Let's think about this. Let's just call. It's a big bet. Fine with a just call. There's the call. Sorry, I get excited. I never flopped this good. The turn card is the king of clubs. Mateos set to fire again. Ooh, it's an over bet. 115,000. What's he doing? It's possible he's got us beat here, but we can't fold. Just going to throw this out there. I know we're talking about a small sample size, but previous hands in this event where we've seen Mateos over bet, he has had it. It's just really hard to have it here when we have a six. Well, Aldemir calls. And this hand's going to the river. Mateos doesn't even have a pot size bet left behind. It's the nine of clubs, and we now have a straighty, flushy paired board. I mean, could have been over betting the turn with a flush draw. Still, we have a hand that we cannot fold. The tails has slowed down. He elects to check. I don't think we're ever beat here, but I also don't think we're getting called very often by anything we're beating. What a weird hand. Aldemir thinking about whether to bet the river. Check. Checks to showdown. Mateos tables 9-5. Huh. Just kind of a weird, rare, ill-timed punt by Adrian. Wow. This level really isn't going well for Adrian Mateos. And Corey Aldemir is back up over the million mark. Adrian said he was having a bad level before. How do you think he'd describe it now? Tag your tweets. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the main event at the 2018 Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure. Before the break, we saw former EPT champ Adrian Mateos try to bluff Corey Aldemir. That did not go well. Oh, no. I am Joe Stapleton. This is professional poker player Griffin Benger. Now, Griffin, I don't think that we can necessarily get into the mind of Adrian Mateos there. I think that he did what he did. In how many attempts at playing that hand would you play it that way? Yeah, I, pretty much, pretty much none. But, I, but again, I think it would be an interesting conversation to have. I think maybe some other hands you could maybe talk about in Aldemir's range. Maybe a hand like pocket fives, pocket sevens, pocket fours um, that he would call the flop and probably just fold the turn. So that's maybe some other hands. But now you're talking about pretty strong value hands that 
he would have had to have checked back and he would even have to have been dealt um, you know when when blind on blind we're seeing such a wider range of hands there was no raise pre-flop we're talking about blind on blind the, the range was th 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 so much wider so yeah it's a super interesting I'd love to talk to him about it maybe we'll get him on here after he uh, after he wins this thing Thanks to Griffin Benja for his analysis. A bit of a stretch right now for Mateos to win this thing. 27 players remain in the PCA main event, and Adrian is the shortest stack in the room. He is at our main feature table right now. But the action is on Livbury. She's under the gun. And faults. Florian Maurer up with Queen 9. Let's it go. Carl Stark is one of the biggest stacks in the room. He's got ace jack. Swedish Iron Man, Jarvis, load up the Lingenberry chips. He raises to 24,000. Mateos has got jacks. Buenos dias, Adrian. And that is a re-raise of three bets to 63,000. Aldemir folds the small blind. Lubavetsky's in the big blind. He passes. Action back on Stark. Come all in. He shoves. Mateos calls all in and is in a great spot to double up here. Gracias. Jotas. As Jota. Adra and Mateos con los pocket hacks. Just has to fade an ace. Pretty good flop for Jax, 9-6-5. Great flop, Hems. A turn card. Here's a seven. Some chop opportunities now. But crucially, Mateos just has to fade that ace on the river to survive. Boom. Full double up. Swedish Iron Man doubles up the Spanish Hulk, or Jolk. So Stark has dropped below a million. Adrian Mateos now playing 491k. Might be the first time things have gone his way today. Well, over to the secondary feature table where we have a new lineup. It's Christian Rudolph versus Jonathan West. West was the pre-flop aggressor. He has jack high. Rudolph with the best hand right now. Ace high and a gut shot straight draw. I think you'll notice, James, that West has jack seven. West continues. 17,000. I really hate ace 10 in this spot, even though it is the best hand. Rudolph calls this hand going to the turn. Deuce of spades. So West picks up a flush draw. Rudolph, a three to one favorite, though. Check to West a second time, and here comes the second barrel. Into 90,000. He bets 70,000. That deuce enough incentive for West to keep barreling. And the barrel incentive enough to get Rudolph folding. Aggression continues to pay off for Jonathan West. Sitting on just over a million. That is a large hoodie. Is that a slanket? The blanket with sleeves? Oh, man down. Good luck, everyone. Orpen kisses a coglu, eliminated in 27th place. Seed Orpen. Cashes for just over 33K. And let's stay out in the field because we have another all-in. Maria Lampropoulou has queens in this spot. Vladimir Anoshka is the at-risk player, but he is way ahead with pocket aces. We haven't seen Maria get into too much trouble, but she's very likely to double up Anoshka. No queen on the flop. We do have two diamonds, though. A diamond on the turn would give us a sweat. But that's a heart. So just two outs for Lampropoulou. The river is the eight of spades. And Noshka doubles up through Lampropoulou. First major hit we've seen her take. Do -do 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 -do. He now has 410k. Lampropoulou drops below the 400k mark. Lampropoulou no longer on Topoulou. We're heading back to the main feature table. Blind still 5-10. Action will be on Livbury. Jack 10 of hearts. 
A lot of folks are going to fold this under the gun, but they are seven-handed. A raise to 23,000. Round to Carl Stark, who has pocket nines. He calls. Corey Aldemir with ace-king in the small blind. From the small blind, you're going to want to re-raise this. You're in the worst position, so you at least want to have the advantage of being the aggressor, even against an under-the-gun raise. One hundred thousand. Lubavetsky in the big blind has ace five of spades. Can't do it, buddy. Not with this action in front of you. He folds. Action back on Liv, the original razor. She folds. Carl Stark. I'm all in. What do heck? <laughs> Cut. Wow. This is a ridiculously huge flip. They are racing for 1.5 million chips, and Carl Stark's PCA life is on the line. Aldebar does not look happy to be flipping. To the flop. Jack 6-4, nine's holding. Stark, a 77% favorite to double up through Aldemir. Queen on the turn gives Aldemir additional outs. A 10 king or ace on the river would eliminate Carl Stark. It's a king, and Carl Stark is out. Nice hand. Wasn't that dude chip leader like five seconds ago? Good luck, guys. Thank you. Like the rest of the Stark family, Carl meets a horrible end. Out in 26th place. Forgot about those Starks. And Aldemir is now a monster stack, 1.8 million. One flip to rule almost them all. That did not seem necessary. <laughs> Understatement of the day. Takes two to tango there, Corey. Aldemir not quite tournament chip leader because David Peters has just crossed the two million mark. Set up the velvet rope, it's VI Peters. 25 players remaining in the main event. New player at the feature table. Brian Ponce has just taken a seat. Action on Adrian Mateos. Queen Deuce. Nice snap. Well, he's folded. Corey Aldemir with 9-6 of diamonds. Decides to raise. 21,000. Speaking of unnecessary. Oh, hello. Aces for Andrei Lubavetsky. Go on. Sneaky, just a call. I love it. Ponce and Barry have both folded. Juan Ponce de la Fold. Florian Maurer has pocket eights in the big blind. Eighty. Bad time for a squeeze, Florian. No boy. Fall from the original razor, but there's no way that Lubavetsky's folding. He's the effective stack here with 410k behind. And he is all in. Last time I saw a trap this good, a ghost was being sucked into it at the Millennium Biltmore Hotel. Wow, quick call from Maurer, who will see that he is crushed. And Lubavetsky is a 4-1 to one favorite to double up here. Love it. Maurer will be left with a bowl of rice. The flop is Jack 7-4. Maurer drawing to two outs. Lubavetsky now a 9-1 to one favorite. Four on the turn, Maurer down to 5% equity. If the light is green, the trap is clean. The river card is an eight. That is not clean at all. Ooh, Maurer gets there. 
look, I got I to gotta step away. I got to go. Look, I, I, I'd be no good to you the rest of the day after this. A bad beat for Andrei Lubavetsky, which sees him eliminated in 25th place from the PCA main event. Me and Andre will see you at the bar. Such a horrible way to lose. This has been a day of crushed dreams. But we are down to 24. We're down to the final three tables. And that hand has catapulted Maurer into the top 10. Seven players have seven-figure stacks. Corey Aldemir sits second in chips with 1.8 million. David Peters leads the field with more than 2 million. Next time, David Peters declares war on the rest of the field. Oh, oh. 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 Meanwhile, Barry and Lampropolu duke it out. Well, then. And find out what triggers this reaction. Wow.